So here we are, back with another review. Now this one was sent to me by Wingsy Kit to do a review and a uh, build of. I thought it was very fitting for the channel, so it was a good thing. I reached out to them, we, we managed to get to a point where both were happy. Now this is a dual, let's think of it like, like what, what, what it's um, going to be going up against. This is a dual combo, essentially. So 148 scale, brand new tool of the Messerschmitt BF109 E1 and E3. Now, if you know your um, emuls, uh, the difference between an E1 and an E3 is simply the wing. It's the cannon arrangement. Uh, the E3 has these bulges, the E1 doesn't have the bulges and the protruding uh, cannons. So... Two kits in the box, uh, differ only on the wings, so we'll do a complete review of one kit with both wings, and um, this is obviously a boxing for the Legion Condor, so that's the German uh, Luftwaffe, essentially, in Spain during the Spanish Civil War, very famous aircraft, uh, one of the most common Spanish Civil War aircraft you will see in modelling is a 109 or a Polycarpoff I-16. Uh, this is obviously the 109. So let's get in the box and see what we got. Now everything comes well wrapped in a, in a very sturdy box. So what you were seeing just a minute ago was just a cover. So this is the actual box that you get everything in and then it's actually wrapped in bubble wrap all the plastic parts this was uh, a direct from Wingsy and you can order it direct off of their website as well and no doubt it'll end up coming to you just like this so let's have a look at what we have in the box so we've got two sets of instructions because it's obviously a dual combo and this is the e3 and that is the e1 Let me just check there's some stuff in there yeah uh, we've got photo etch masks and the decals so let's have a look at those first so this is obviously for the condor legion so what you get is two sets of stencils up there these are also by decal graph which is um as i said a lot of things coming out of the ukraine wingsy is just another manufacturer coming out of the, the ukraine uh, as well as many others and um they all do things slightly differently they don't seem to be sort of linked other than they use the same you know the same people are cutting the masks for them, the same people are doing the photo etch, it seems, and, that, and that's how it goes on. So there's a whole little cottage industry going in over there, uh, which is uh, rather unusual. So we've got enough, obviously, markings to do two sets of uh, aircraft. So that's enough roundels, so two on the top, two on the lower wing, twice. And enough markings to do one of each of the supplied markings. Uh, carrier film is almost non-existent around all of this, even on these crosses, it's right up to it. And then around here, it's just one big rectangle and then it goes around the circle which cuts for it so it should be absolutely no problem i've used these before they went down lovely i mean i'm a i'm a real uh, picky person when it comes to, to decals now what this has is very fine surface detail and the ones i've used them on didn't have rivets so i'm not so sure they will sink into the rivets but obviously that comes down more to uh, a skill level thing rather than uh, whether the decal's good or not so there we go we'll talk a little bit more about the markings in a minute we've also got uh, pre-cut masks which also give you the mast off areas for around the exhaust. Uh, Germans being Germans, for some reason had a real be in their bonnet about exhaust staining. So they seem to mass this off down the wing route for some reason and around there and this is always very tricky to get sorted because it's a, it's a kind of interesting curve and that is what they've given us here. So you've got two sets of those. So that's perfect to see, then you just run your tape down continuing it on. We will now have a look at the marking options. So what we've got here is uh, four E variants and we've got two E1s and two E3s. If you don't know, usually if it was anything else, you'd think, you know, Spitfire Mark 1, then the Mark 2, then the, on it goes. The E1 and the E3 were being produced at the same time. So it's not, it, the E1 isn't a sub-variant, it, it's, it's just an armament version. So it doesn't have um, the cannons in the wings. It's got machine guns in the wings. Whereas this one has cannons and you can see them as they're protruding. Um, and it's also got bulges underneath. So you would think, oh, right, so the E1s would have gone to Spain first and the E3s would have followed. There's only about six, I believe, E1s. And there was, uh, I think, 90 or 80, something like that, E3s. So there isn't a lot of E1s to choose from. And a lot have been misidentified uh, over the years. However, these two are E3s, the homework's been done, and it looks like I can already see with a few telltale signs that they really have done the homework on these. Um, if you really ever want to know anything about uh, Spanish 109s, then the book that I've mentioned before and I've shown on the channel before is the German Eagles in Spanish Skies. Uh, it's the new, well, it, it, you know, it, it's the new standard. 
and um, in there you see a lot of breakdown on, on the different variants up to the E's and including the E's. So what we can see here, for me, that are telltale signs already, the supercharger intakes being in ROM70, which they were, uh, 71 sorry that is because they were coming separately so they were they were produced just think of it as, as they were coming as a separate part from somewhere else and they were being applied so they didn't get the same camouflage treatment think of it like that the white walled tail wheel once you see that on early 109s you won't unsee it, it, it they all had it all the way through the early part of the war battle of britain they've all got uh, this white wall tail wheel so that's nice and there's a few other differences as well it, which is the stencil markings and um, they should change for the different versions because they're not all the same they didn't all have certain things they do actually look generic yeah they look generic it's something you want to check in your um, references because I do believe that each each aircraft has different types of stenciling certainly some of the triangles here are different sizes some of these don't exist as well so you just want to check um, as you go through, Edward did a, a great, uh, for their 132nd uh, Condor Legion boxing, they did a, a printout going through the different um, variants in the kit. Uh, that should still be available if you search online. Um, and I, I've got it downloaded and it's a, it's a real um, good bit of information. But overall, if you're not going to go absolutely mad on it, these are perfectly fine. They've got some of the uh, telltale signs sorted. Everything looks correct as far as uh, the main markings. And like I say, with the supercharger intake, the tail wheel, a few other little bits I can see here, there, and everywhere. <clears throat> These look very good. The one thing that is an issue with uh, Spanish 109, certainly the E's, is, is you have seen it all before. Nothing new here on the, on the schemes. Uh, they always seem to be the same ones picked, probably because there's a lot of photos of them. So you've got, uh, they're all from J88, but they're different... Um, so it's, it's one J88 and then three J88. But you've got Hans Schmolle Halder. Uh, in 6123. You've got, would that be Obel Lieutenant? Seabelt Rents, which is uh, 39, this one's 38, and that's 6119. I think I've built, I have, I've built both of those. <laughs> I've done this one as well. So no pilot here, so that's Catalonia, uh, Spain 1939, must be towards the end if we're up in Catalonia. And uh, this is the one I did my 132nd one as, uh, which is uh, 691, which is quite nice because cause it's got the early oval uh, logos here for the propeller which people misidentified as um hamilton standard ones but it's not it's uh, it's an early sort of german version of it and that's herbert shop in barcienz barcelona not sure spain 1939 this one's actually quite nice it's got the lower number the rest are into the hundreds um but yeah it's uh, and it's an e3 see what i say it's not an e1 it's an e3 coming in uh, quite early so there we go that's the marking schemes if you really want to go to town with it get that german eagles in spanish skies so as we're here we'll have a look you get two instruction sheets we're going to look at the e3 and obviously just then look at the the wing for the e1 um it's going to be different Difficult not to make direct comparisons with the Edward kit in 148th because that's really the, the the standard at the minute. So that's what we'll be looking at. I've already had a look through here, and there's a couple of things that I'm not going to say they're wrong. Um, you just want to check your references. They're unusual, I think. That you know they are correct in a certain instance. So it's something just to bear in mind as we go through. I'll point out a couple of the, the options. Uh, so first off, looking at the cockpit, how it's made up. We've got the cockpit floor with the the seat going in and uh, the instrument the instrument panels down here <laughs> the uh, oxygen tank and the rudder pedals first point is the rudder pedals this isn't incorrect it can be one or the other it looks like uh, you get rudder pedals that are solid rudder pedals that have circles um, drilled out of them and also you get rudder pedals with the circles drilled out of them and a plate put over the top for sort of like gripping I would imagine being um, earlier versions these would perhaps in a in a Condor Legion boxing be the ones with the holes in but uh, you know that's up to you and rudder pedals you know you can barely see them once they're in there we've got the um, seat going in with the, the the lap harnesses going on and all of this is pretty much standard being made up here some nice uh, small parts of photo etch going on as well to give us a bit more detail the oxygen tank compared with the Edward one is correct it is the right height the uh, Edward one is incorrect it's too tall you have to cut it down uh, then we make up the cockpit tub we go into the uh, propeller being made up uh, we will have a look at the propeller when we get to it in the sprues it just it looks ever so slightly 
it looks a bit too short and fat. It should be. It looks like it's the correct dimensions if it was just to be elongated a little bit more. And um, they run to a point, whereas in the kit they are more rounded. It's almost like an E merged with a FG propeller bit more paddle like. Uh, we get some nice options for blanking off some of the holes that you don't get in the Edward kit. You have to build an engine uh, here so you have to build an engine and if you want it closed you sand it off. Uh, here we've got the the top of the engine blanking off these holes in the openings on the top of the cowling and behind the machine guns and we've also got the what you can see here this is um, part of the coolant header tank. I looked it up and uh, you see it through the holes uh, here. There's a hole there and you can actually see it and it, it, it stays there. It doesn't spin, it, it's, it's, I don't think. Um, but it's part of the front of the engine, so it should be visible. And it's nice that we've got that here as a sort of blanking off that hole as well. Then we make up the wing. Not a criticism, but I will just ask, I don't know why we've got separate wing tips, but we do. Um, I can't see any reason for that. In a Spitfire you have different, you know, you can have clip wings and all the rest of it, but in the E-Series, the only different wing is a T, and that's a completely different wing. It's not an extension. But nevertheless, um, that's fine. Uh, then we've got making use of the two-page spread in the middle, the stencil data layout, which is good, and we've got the uh, paint callouts down there as well, which are in Mr. Colour and Mr. Harvey. So the fuselage goes together, and then the cockpit tub and the chin goes on afterwards. So that's a, a nice touch, means you don't get any, you can sand all your seams and everything without getting dust into the cockpit. Getting the horizontal stabilizers ready, and it looks like these are um, tabs going in to take the horizontal stabilizers. Then the uh, wing goes on, and the radiators, uh, the side walls for the radiators, are going on as well, uh, which is a, a nice thing uh, to save. You know that shouldn't need sanding instead of having a seam across the middle or something like that. Got photo etch as well, much more extensive photo etch than you'll see in other kits, which is nice. Uh, the exhaust stubs going in, uh, not hollow. So something to watch out for. Then the canopy is starting to go on. So the front and rear portion of the canopy and the slats and ailerons and elevators going on, as well as the seat belts. We'll come to them in a minute. Uh, then we make up the insides of the radiator with the top part going on. We've also got the chin intake, which again is another nice touch. The Edward one is already moulded in. You have to it goes together like that, and then you have to deal with this seam. So we've eliminated that, which is a, a, a plus for sure. And this is much more finer detail than you'll get on the Edward one, even if you were to get the photo etch upgrade. We've got lots of tiny little bits of photo etch going on along here. Uh, then we've got the, um, the flaps going on, tail wheel, landing gear, counterweights and pitot tube. Uh, we've got photo etch parts for the, I can't think what they're called, the opening parts at the rear of the, um, the radiators. The bits that open like that. Um, these are in photo etch, so they'll be very fine. And then we're adding in the machine guns, this being an E3, the canopy, and the aerial, or antenna mast. And that is the uh, 109s that are currently available, and they're bound to have, you know, E7 and, and running up through the rest of them. So E1, E3, E1 and E3 dual combo, dual boxing, I shouldn't say dual combo, and the E4 is out as well. Now, looking at the photo etch, you can see it's quite a small threat, but it's all there. This is the oxygen tank. This is the part of the uh, oxygen tank front there. We've got the rear portions of the radiator and the chin intake. Uh, the armoured headrest as well. Uh, you won't see that in Condor Legion uh, aircraft. And we've got the seat belt. Now, all the harnesses. Now, something to be said about these, first off, before I go into this, I think you can use these in the uh, original way and it's not a problem. You just slide that through the hole in the seat. What they've chosen to do for all the whole E-Series, which I find a bit strange, is they've given us these harnesses. And actually, I'll just get the seat out as well. My understanding, I've looked this up, I've talked to a couple of people, I can't see that there's anything other than occasionally you get the seat belts laid out in the way that they're given here. The vast majority go through this hole here and they're tensioned by a, a kind of spring, there's like a bar and a spring tensioner here, so they come down here and tie on the back. Obviously you don't need any of that for models. Uh, it's quite perfectly fine for modelers just to push it through the hole in the seat and just stick it on the back. Now the hole in this seat is not not hollow, so there's one thing. 
Um, but the the type they've given you here do exist, and I've got a picture that I'll show you in a minute. And it it, it is pinned. It's sort of a pin. This piece here is kind of fixed there. And then the belt loops around it and goes back down behind the seat. Now that I can only seem to find is an occasional way of, of, of having them. Now to show you that it did happen, there you go there. This is on a T series. And this is what you've got in the kit. This is what they give you. It goes around like that. But I'm certain, and you can see, because when you find the pilot sitting in there, although ironically, I don't actually have a picture of it in this book, um, but you'll see that the pilots often, you know, you can you can be seen. See, it, I thought it might have been an early layout, but it, it's not uh, because, as you can see, this is a B. It's not got them there, and it's actually running down the back there, as you can see, as we've gone through. This is my understanding of how they're meant to be all the way through the E series. Um, they go through the back. Anything else would just be a slight variation on it, but it certainly wouldn't be the norm. And then as we go forward through here, there isn't really any massive change in the E. You see it, it kind of goes down through the back there, through the back onto this tensioner here. But it does seem it can go either way because I've just found, you know, I even think this chap here actually. Terrible glare, I know. But I think even this chap, you can see that they're actually, they're going over here. They're going over the top, which means they'll be under what this is um, given to us from Wingsy. So it really is a case of check your references. And I've just seen a, um, a Swiss one. It's got a Swiss one here, although you can't tell anything by a Swiss one because they had a lot of uh, different things going on. But that to me looks again like the layout that they've given us in the kit. See that there any better? You see that it seems to be going over, it's not going through the seat. If it was going through the seat, you wouldn't see it. And they're hanging out the side like they're tied up here. So something to bear in mind, um, it's not something I've seen offered in a kit before. So it's interesting from that point of view. Um, personally, I'll just push them through the seat for, for an easy life. Um, and I think you can do that, no problem here. You just, you know, just cut out the, the hole in the seat and stick them on through. Or if you don't want to bother with that, just cut them off where you see fit and um, poke them through like that. Just poke them into it. So it's, a, it's an easy thing and it's a nice option, I suppose, to have that. However, you know, it's not something I've seen before. Um, so you'd have to really go by your individual references. So that's just one thing to point out. I don't think that's a criticism, really. It's just, a, you know, check your references, really. So now it's time to have a look at the sprues. Now, what we've got here, starting off with, with the sprue that we're on, we have the parts for the wheel wells, the upper cowling, chair, cockpit floor, uh, propeller, well, nose cones, the blank for the uh, oxygen tank, tail wheel, cockpit side walls, blank for the engine. So having a look on the inside of the wheel wells first, they're quite, as you can see, there's not really, there's a little bit of riveting detail down there, raised rivets, two lines of. Um, and there's the internal surfaces that go on the other side. Um, usually uh, there is, well, there is a lot of detail in the wheel wells. There's a, a stitching and a canvas uh, kind of um, cover, I guess, that gets zipped up around there. But again, it's a wheel well, who cares? You know, I don't tend to add it when you get it as um, additional detail anyway. There's the blank for the header tank that we mentioned earlier. All very crisp moulding, uh, nice bit of rivet detail there internal which is nice to see all around there and some hatches and, and things like that don't get that on the Edward kit or any of the other 148 kits that are out at the minute so that's all looking good no ejector pin marks no flash no miss mold nothing like that very solid that cockpit floor looks very nice really well detailed nice um, definition to it really quite great that so let's look at the fuselage. So one thing you'll notice here is the uh, absolutely incredible surface detail that's been moulded into this with recessed rivets, fine panel lines, raised detail where necessary. 
Now that is finer than the Edward offering, but you know, they're both very impressive. I think this one edges it slightly. Just bearing in mind the Edward kit sort of, you know, 12, 13 years old, so it's not up to the le level of uh, of what you're seeing now. Oh, it might be 10 years old, sorry. And this is very impressive, as you can see. And I knew that going in, um, I, with the clawed, uh, the, the, the marking, uh, the, the surface detail on that is incredible. Um, there we've got the one piece upper cowling going on and the chin section as well so that eliminates any sanding around here so you keep all your hatches was in the edward kit this is a seam line and same here oh, with separate cowling uh, uh, parts actually in the edward kit we've got a tropical filter as well so we've got an e7 coming not too far pretty much an e7 looks like an e4 um or an e3 from the outside bar a couple of hatches here and there so that's a very nice spruce we've got two of them perfectly done now we've got the e3 wing <clears throat> with the bulges and again look at that surface detail all across there really much it's much better than um, the edward kit in fact here's an edward wing for comparison the lighter plastic underneath As you can see, there's there's more, how do I describe the the Edward stuff? Just kind of, you know, you just get blocks of it. You see, you just get a line there, two lines there, okay, for that section. Whereas here, it actually means something. You know, you get a rectangle in there, a rectangle in there, then you get the vertical lines and the horizontal lines. You also get definition and riveting around the scoop there as well. Whereas in the Edward kit, you don't. Now, in current generation Edward kits, you are starting to get that detail, but just bear in mind, this is a much older, it's one of their first releases with this sort of surface detail. I think that speaks for itself, really. It's very, very impressive as you go out there, even to the point, you know, you've just got circles there, see, in the Edward kit, whereas here you've got actual detail in the hatches. There you go. And I mean, it seems subtle, but when you add it all up, uh, at the end result, it's going to be a much more impressive model. You can see the riveting and the detail on this piece here compared to this piece. So, there we go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And then the E1 wing is very much the same, minus those bulges. It's just got areas for them. And as I said, it's... Uh, it's the same sort of wing, so you know it, it's it's ready for it. It just depends on which armament they give it in the uh, factory. Really impressive. Then we got the top of the wings, which is actually the same. Just to show you just how similar the E1 and the E3 is, it's the same. And the only thing you have to do is cut out a blanked off area for the machine gun. So there we go. God, it would be nice if um, Wingsy went back into the. Uh, the early variants as well, wouldn't it? Imagine that, with all this surface detail. Very nice. Yeah, incredible stuff. And there's the uh, detail for the uh, wheel wells, internals. Now you could argue, this is the Edward uh, propeller blades. Now you could argue that that is almost going the other way, but it, it's very close to, to what it looks like in pictures. It runs down to a point, it's kind of fatter at the base and then runs out narrowing all the way down if you compare that to the wingsy offering you can see that the wingsy offering is a lot fatter and a lot more rounded at the tip so that's certainly not correct it should run down to a point uh, how sharp the point is is you know is is arguable but it should definitely run down to a point this is much more like the kind of f version which funny enough i've also got here you see so this is an f it's kind of like they've merged an e and an f together is it much closer to that And that's not how the e-propeller looked. Now, of course, you know, I'm only talking to people who 
care about this. If you don't care, then just build it as it is. Um, but if you do care, it might be something to look at. Um, quick boost to a propeller set and I think that's the the kind of way I'd be going myself probably grab a couple of quick boost um, props to go on this um, now the next thing that you can sort of look at an alarm bells ring you go oh um, there's no surface detail on the rudder or on the um, uh, the ailerons or the flaps for that matter but there is and it's extremely subtle and you can see it there and that is about as in scale as you're likely to get for fabric texture it's absolutely perfect once you've painted that that's just going to catch the light so well and you can see it there as well on the right you just see the kind of high points running down his vertical don't worry about this it's just the mold you don't see it as soon as you paint over it it's just where the plastics kind of called really impressive stuff how subtle they've molded that in so that's very nice i'm very interested to see what that's going to look like under a, a, a bit of paint um you've got the landing gears right well as, as we're there he says we're... so one thing that is known about the edward landing gear is they're about two or a mil or two too long so this is what i wanted to check we really are getting into it now aren't we there you go there you go I was hoping this would be the case so the Edward is too long by well about that much there you go so if you ever worried about the way it sits because the Edward kit is it does sit a bit high when you notice it there you go the wingsy one won't the wingsy one will sit just right great stuff look at that can see it is about it's about two mil oh, mil and a half possibly so there we are that's good to see happy about that i was hoping that would be the case i didn't think i'd have it on hand to actually uh, be able to be able to check so very good you know no kit's perfect we're talking about everyone loves the edward kit well you know the oxygen tank's the wrong size uh, the landing gear is too long you've got to faff about with the engine but it's pretty much okay from that well this one looks like you know you need a new prop belts if you want but at least you can make the belts work both ways you haven't got that option with anyone else and there we go with the last sprue more surface detail on the slats we've got recess riveting which is lovely again you don't get that on the edward kit very hard to show there because it's so fine uh, wheels are nice they're done in one piece there you go to try and save the uh, sort of join seam there so just a little bit to, to sand down nice detail not compromised because of it and we've got raised makers marks around there as well some inscription around the wall uh, tire wall uh, wall there's the rudder pedal see it's solid that's just an option uh, let's again as we're here I can't remember what Edward do yeah they give you the other option now both are correct and both are incorrect depending on what you look at so it's just something to bear in mind so again if you're worried it gets so far down in the cockpit no one can ever see it but if you you know you can chip chop and change if you've got an edward kit and you've used the photo x ones well then you might have some of these spare and you swap it out if you want to um there's a point as well that is the oxygen tank which has got too many holes it should be free god blimey i know what i sound like one two three so it should be there and uh wingsy have got that correct it may seem like we're picking fault here there and everywhere but um you know if you're gonna get it right we should get it right really so there we are good stuff i think wingsy's coming out on top at every stage by the propeller at the minute against edward in my personal opinion um there's the canopy so this is the free canopy which has got a more curved outline to the center section so you've got an armored windscreen there as a separate which you use going yeah very nice oh crystal clear what can what more can you say about it you know it's absolutely crystal clear no distortion no problem there very nice indeed so there we go that is um it's a fair comparison to the uh edward kit which is the only thing near it i think overall my my views i i think 
yes, we get a little bit rivet county as we're going to. If you if you're not interested in any of that, don't worry about it. Look at the good points of the video. Don't just you know come at me saying <laughs> in the comments that oh it's a river count and, and you know modeling's uh, being ruined um that's more on you i'm afraid if you think that um so ultimately where's the where's let's start with the bad points um of course this kit was sent to me now i I'd, I'd like to think if if you know the channel enough and you've followed me for long enough that doesn't sway me you know if it, if this was a, a pile of rubbish i would call it a pile of rubbish if it was the best kit in the world i would say it's the best kit in the world now i actually think it's the best 109 and 148 scale i think it's jumped to the front of the queue um criticisms i've seen on this kit around the internet are the price again i think that's people just taking things at face value and jumping on it and going oh this is 31 pounds and i can get the edward kit for 27 pounds well all you can get the edward kit is a weekend edition for 14 pounds shall we say well this kit comes with masks and a photo etch set so it's a essentially a profit pack so you're, you're looking you're you're you should only compare the price of this to a profit pack not this particular one being two in one and you're only about five or out and then you think so what are you getting for that extra five pounds is it worth it you're getting very good decals should i say um compare it to now and uh, to, to the new edward stuff so you've got a very nice set of decals you've got all the stuff that you would have in an edward kit with more detail so there's more photo etch more detail um four options okay maybe edward would maybe have six five or six more the construction looks like and i've seen some go together as well it looks like it's going to be done in a better process and it's going to end in a in a more pleasing result without so much effort as far as there's not going to be a lot of seam work the surface details better the decals compared to current generation edward now are better the landing gear is the right height the cockpit looks better there's more definition in the cockpit floor there's more definition around the top there's more detail all the way over it it's better um the seat belts okay they're a little bit they're a check your reference kind of thing i can't really say whether they're right or wrong but i think you can very easily use them in both ways so i don't think that's really much of an issue the propeller is i think the propeller isn't right i think we've got to once it was put up against the edward f propeller i think we've got to say that that's not quite right um so overall i do believe this is the best 148 bf 109 e that we've got at the minute but yes if you want to make a very good model we're going to need to change the prop out that's it um that's not the end of the world and um there are options out there um i do think it's part you know it would have been nice to have not had that as an issue and again it's unfortunate because <laughs> every other edward kit you get multiple propellers uh you know f propellers g propellers fw190 propellers but you don't get leftover ml propellers because you only get one that's something you have to think about obviously the edward kit comes with engine um that you can display if you want to as well and that's about it i think my money would be on this one i think i'll be buying this the wingsy kit from now on personally i'm going to build both of these i'm going to get the condor legion one out reasonably soon it will be built very quickly because i'll probably build that in my sleep and finish it um and then i'm so i'm going to do the e3 as a condor legion one and we will be doing 6107 there you go nice bog standard more 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 mores one i built before and um it's not on the front of this box <laughs> and now i'm going to build the e1 as a uh, pcas yabo uh, which i've got some decals from in a um kagero book so i'll get both of those out uh reasonably soon uh, so thanks to wingsy for supplying us with the kit um a build will follow this for uh, uh shortly as well as i've said i think it's a very impressive model i think it's very well executed apart from the few issues that we've mentioned i think it goes straight to the top of um the 109s in 148 scale and it's certainly worth a go so as, as i've said but previously you can order this direct from uh, wingsy kits website i'll put a link in the description below you can also get it on hanans they're in the uk i've seen them all over the place um so there's plenty around should be very accessible so if you want to have a go at it look it up and um get one in your stash so as always thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.